Right. I think we've uh, we've started now. Um, so uh, uh, thanks for everyone joining this morning. Um, I'm uh, Gavin Lojani, Head of Strategy and Insight at, uh, at Dot Digital. Um, and I'm going to run through this presentation, um, which is retention starts with hello, five steps to optimize the post uh, donation experience. Um, but before we, we get away, I just want to kind of understand from you guys what kind of state you're in. Um, so tell me, this is a, your first poll of the day. Um, are you still in your PJs um, in the comfiest loungewear? Um, are you dressed as if you were going to the office? Um, it sort of let me know uh, how, how you're feeling at the moment. Um, and then uh, and then we can we can move on. So how, how are you feeling? Uh, it looks as though, oh, most of you are in your comfy loungewear. Good, good. Most people are in their comfy loungewear, um, so uh, so that's that's perfect. Let's let's uh, let's move on. I'll, hopefully, you know I can keep you guys comfy still throughout this. Um, but just in case you guys uh, don't know who uh, who we are, um, we are um, an omni-channel marketing solution for a number of marketers, but today most importantly uh, for NFP marketers. Um, speed and ease of use are at the core of what we do, so we help help you uh, reach your goals faster. Um, and we're trusted by uh, over 4,000 uh, customers worldwide in a variety of sectors to do just that. So um, I'm passionate about um, a couple of things. Um, data and, and customer experience um, are, are, are probably a couple of those. But to deliver the latter, uh, the customer experience, um, we shouldn't get caught up in terminology uh, that our donors, um, that you guys have. Your donors, your supporters, your volunteers are in fact uh, actually customers. Um, and they're familiar with the high levels of uh, customer experience that they get uh, from B2C brands. So what I wanted to do now is, uh, is understand from you guys what you actually refer to your, your customers as. So uh, you can fill this out now. And um, yeah, we start to get a feel for uh, who, who you uh, actually call your customers. So uh, start filling that out now. Um, hopefully you guys, have, uh, you guys have got that. Let's have a look, see how you're, you're filling that out. Supporters, anyone. Someone says anyone. A lot of people are saying anyone. This is, this is, this is interesting. Uh, donors, service, um, beneficiaries. Um, there's a lot here. Someone. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, that, that to me uh, kind of says it all. You know, there's a number of different um, um, terms that we're using here, but they're all essentially uh, customers. So. Um, this is this is very interesting here. Um, Eighty percent of your company's future revenue will come from just twenty percent of your existing customer base. Now that says a, a couple of things uh, to me. It says that we should be treating our, our customer base differently depending on you know how much time or money they uh, uh, donated to us, but also it's a lot cheaper to retain customers, no matter what you call them. Um, so what we need to do is we need to look after those people, your consumers, customers, whatever, um, you know, they want to have the uh, full experience, the full fairy tale like Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman. So they want the full customer experience, whether it's e-commerce, retail, hospitality, customer uh, charity, not-for-profit, you know, we need to look at the customer life cycle. And that customer life cycle um, gives us a chance to understand exactly where these people are and how we can deliver them the experience that they need, um, you know, giving them real time um, um, experiences. So the customer life cycle, this is it. We need to use data to drive us forward in, in this. You know, data driven practices means better results and more sustainable growth. So if you use your data in a smarter way, you'll have um, increases on your bottom line. And that data spans the whole journey and it helps you to personalize and give the experience that, that everyone is, is looking for. So you're taking away all the guesswork and you're working with pinpoint precision. So another poll for you now. Um, and, um, and this one here is just to understand how you use your data or how your data is stored at the moment. Be honest. If it's on scraps of paper, fine. You know, we can work on that. Uh, if it's an Excel spreadsheet, you use an ESP like ourselves, dot uh, digital. Um, it's in a CRM, in a data management platform, or a customer uh, data platform. So, um, so just sort of go through uh, go through those and, and see what uh, what we have. Um, 
a number of people saying CRM. I'm glad to see no one is saying um, scraps of paper at the moment. Um, some people say an Excel spreadsheet. And that's fine, but I think you need to sort of progress uh, and move through that. Impressed to see people using uh, data management platforms as well, uh, but CRM looks like the uh, the far out winner here. Um, so that's great. That's great to, to understand where people are, are holding their data because data is massively important. Um, and you would need to capture valuable data along the way. And I've had uh, presentations on the fact that I find data very sexy, and I, I think you need to find it sexy too. It helps to inform us and tailor the experiences of people along the way. Um, and people don't like marketing. They don't like marketing. They like to get um, um, relevant content that is useful. So in order to do that, we need to not just collect the email address, but start to collect more valuable information from people. Um, and this is where a, um, a preference center can come into play. They're best practice for a reason. It lets the customers know they're in control. And if you empower them, they'll engage more with you. And more engagement means more loyalty and more um, in, increased sales or in, in, in pre increasing in ROI. And this isn't an NFP example. This is from Le Creuset, but it goes through exactly what you need to be thinking of when you're putting a, a, a preference center together. What sort of information do you want from people so you can help to generate them a better experience? So look at this, birthdays, we'll come to that in a second. You know. Um, postcode has got a zip code in there, but postcode, will you need that? But any other other bits and pieces, like maybe how often you're going to send a message to, messages to them. So think about all of that sort of stuff. So preference centers are key. We then want to look at keep the journey going. So the data is, is vital, but after that, this is where we kind of kick into the, the post um, donation experience. We want to understand uh, a little bit more to get feedback, um, you know, reevaluate what we're sending. Um, make them more than customers, surprise and delight them, and then amplify your reach. Okay, um, so we're moving into this post donation phase, and initially we want to reevaluate what we're sending. You know, someone's made a, a donation of their time and money, um, and then you want to change up what you're sending. So reevaluating it could be, you know, maybe taking them out of BAU after they've made a donation, whatever you do at this stage, don't send them more information about how they can donate because they've just done that. Um, instead, send them information on how they can get their friends and family into the mix um, and how they can share things on social and raise awareness. Um, useful content is always going to be what people need. Uh, the DMA say that over half of, of what people receive um, isn't useful. It's marketing. And as I said before, people hate those marketing messages. So if it's useful, they won't see it as marketing. So what we need to look forward to is something like this. So British Heart Foundation have done this. After someone's donated their time or money, um, they're getting these uh, messages. So congratulations. Um, it's personalized as well with the name, with how much they've actually uh, raised, with what they were actually doing. And then afterwards as well, all this good information about what we're going to do with what you've um, what you've generated for us. All of this information is what you need after they've made a donation. So to change up the narrative a little bit. So think about that in the in the post donation phase. Um, so we've we've uh, we've reevaluated what we're sending. We then need to get some good feedback. If you've done a good job, get good feedback. Um, post donation is another tool to help build you know, customer loyalty. And when you've delivered a, a great service, um, you know, you want to, to shout about it and let other people know about it. Um, so it, it sounds strange that, you know, if we work on a situation where peers endorse bits and pieces in different businesses or, or charities, um, we'll get behind them. So we need to get good feedback from people to understand whether or not we've been doing a good job. So this takes us to the next page, um, getting good feedback. Now, this example, these examples here, again, are uh, from, from B2C, but it, it depicts exactly what you need to be doing um, as a not-for-profit. Uh, anthropology here on the left hand side their message is we're listening uh, what you think of us matters um, so we've been working hard to give you more of what you love and that's what we're looking for you know was the process a good process great let's do more of that if it wasn't let's fix what we're doing there um, this example here from Bellroy on the right hand side is actually one email but it's split into three and they've done it really well so they've been able to ask people if they're doing a good job 
at the top. Um, they're asking people to share things socially as well so they can get social into the mix and we'll, we'll come to that more uh, later on. But they also are asking people to expand into the family um, and buy more from Bellroy, which could mean if you've donated your time, maybe next time you donate to money and vice versa. So it's a really great uh, way of, of fusing a couple of things into one email and getting the job, uh, job done there. So um, we've reevaluated what we sent. Uh, we've, um, we're getting feedback, but then also we want to make them more than just customers. Everyone wants their five seconds of fame. You know, feature people into your content. Be inclusive. You know, um, you've got a cause that they can get behind. Well, make sure they, they actually can see that and get behind it. Now, the next example is one that I am not tired of using. I will keep using this till the cows come home uh, because this is brilliant. It uses all of the data and it brings all the bits and pieces together that we're, we're talking about here after someone has made a donation. We're using, um, in this example here from EasyJet, it's the first place they, they went to holiday with them. It's the uh, next place they should go on holiday. It's the fact that they love to sit in the window seat more often. It's how far they've traveled. All of this information is the data that I spoke about at the beginning that you can use to power a campaign like this. The, the first donation they made, the last donation they made, um, how much they've uh, raised for us over this time, um, and then uh, what you could be doing next to help us out. All of these bits and pieces could, could be included in here. Um, and just this one here is sort of a plug. I love Patagonia, um, not necessarily just uh, the brand and the, uh, wearing, the, wearing their clothing, etc. but I love what they stand for. And this is all about getting behind this. So if you if you stand for something, talk about it and then make that flow through to your, the, your email campaigns as well, just so people can see that you know, this is something I really do want to get behind and they can share it socially. Um, I'm not going to talk any more about them, but you know, if you want to see some good examples of uh, email marketing, get signed up to, uh, to Patagonia's uh, emails. So, you know, we're, we're moving on into uh, different stages. So what we want to do here, as I said, is reevaluate what we're sending, get good feedback, uh, make them more than just customers, keep them included, but also surprise and delight them. You know, give them an unexpected gift. Um, gift uh, if you can do that you know maybe you break it down to only vip customers um maybe it's um maybe it's something that uh, that people can get depending on how much they've donated etc in in time or money and you can use rfm uh, modeling to do that and again we'll come back to to rfm in a, in a second now you're gonna have to bear with me here this slide is a little bit more interactive we had some gifts going on in here but i can i can break down to you exactly what's uh, what's happening um on the left hand side was an email from joy and basically joy are trying to find out when your birthday was um because they want to send you a birthday gift so this is a great way of just understanding you know birthday boy birthday girl and all of that uh, information to help enrich the programs later on which can lead to an email like this one here on the right hand side from Old Navy. And this woman, you can't see it here, but all she's doing is blowing out candles. Now, um, you don't have to have an offer in here. Well, most of you wouldn't have an offer, but you can just send out an email to say happy birthday. In some cases, it's a good thing just to say happy birthday, right? It's a good feeling. Um, and then the email in the middle is actually a kinetic or interactive email. And this is great because if you actually click on the flip switch, um, the lights go on and off. And that's brilliant. If you're generating something slightly different in your campaigns, it gives a reason uh, for people to actually look out for your, your, your emails um, and be happy about what they're receiving. So think about surprising uh, and delighting people as well. Now, these are examples from uh, Charity Water. Um, and again, on this page here, you can't see that there's a GIF in here. Um, the two emails to the left hand side are actually the same email. And that image at the top here is flicking through a number of different images of people. And, you know, uh, if a picture speaks a thousand words, then GIFs, their word count is off the charts. And this is what we need to do, you know, split up the image and text quite nicely. But this is a beautiful email. You know, even with the, um, the, the GIF switched off, it looks, it looks brilliant. But with the GIF on, it really adds more to it. And the other thing as well is this, this here uh, on the right hand side is five reasons uh, to donate. This could quite easily be an abandoned cart email or abandoned browse email. It, it wasn't actually, but they could use it in that way. And that's another way of, of sort of connecting with people um, and surprising, delighting them possibly before the donation and actually afterwards as well, if they're, they're going through those, those processes again. So those are, those are very good examples there from, uh, from Charity Water.
Now, what we need to be doing um, after this as well, we need to be um, reevaluating what, what we send, as I said, getting good feedback, um, really um, making them more than customers, surprising, delight in, uh, surprising, delighting them, but also amplifying your reach. You know, don't rely on email alone. We're an email marketing omnichannel uh, company, yes, but um, you yeah, can go beyond um, just uh, just email too. You know, so companies with strong um, omnichannel uh, customer engagement strategies on average retain about eighty nine percent of their customers, um, as compared to thirty three percent who don't quite have that uh, omnichannel strategy. So I'm going to ask you now: um, Are you currently using omnichannel marketing? Um, very simple: Yes, no, or what is omnichannel? Um, and if you don't know what Omnichannel is, I'm going to tell you anyway. So uh, let's get some uh, feedback from you guys. Um, most people are saying, what is Omnichannel? So I will break it down for you. Um, Omnichannel uh, takes on an integrated approach to marketing sales. Um, marketing sales, sorry, and, and operations. That means data flows through, uh, through your business on all um, offline and online systems, and they're all connected. And consumers can um, shop across multiple uh, channels and devices while feeling a whole unified customer um, experience. It's kind of like this here from, from Ted Bacon. Again, I know it's a, a B2C example, but it shows you exactly the journey some people take. They go onto the website, maybe they don't uh, buy anything, so they abandon. You can try to retarget them on, on Facebook, um, connect with them on SMS, drive them back to the website where they can make a conversion and then you can get people to, to talk about it socially as well. Um, customers spend on average 3.5 times more with a brand that they engage with on multiple channels. Um, so that shows you where we should be going. Now, Asthma UK um, is committed to you know, preventing asthma attacks and curing asthma. So they use a 12-step um, process um, in an automation program to get people to you know, manage their, their symptoms better. And in, this is the sort of thing they were doing. There's a, um, uh, an automated program that you can see there in the background. Um, but then you get these emails on the left-hand side that are coming out and being sent along the way. So that's a great way of managing this. But also they're feeding into this, weaving into this um, uh, SMS messages as well to build up um, a fuller campaign and improve the user experience to get them exactly what they need to help them better their lives. Now, this is a brilliant way of, of using a number of different channels, but a great way of feeding and fusing all of this together is by making sure that you have all of the data available. And using RFM modeling can help you get all of that data you need to start feeding into different channels. Um, and then you can start um, reaching out uh, and using other channels as well, like uh, like um, social here and getting people to um, to connect with you on, on those channels too. I'm rushing a little bit because I know I've, uh, I've uh, not so much time to, to go through all of this, but it's a really great way to help you engage your customers a hell of a lot better um, on a number of different channels. Um, and using that data to um, give different um, outputs to people, maybe on VIP programs because they spent more with you, maybe exclusive SMS or Facebook messages, et cetera. All the, always the data should be helping to drive a better customer experience. So just to kind of wrap up, we need to make sure that we're getting better data once we have better data, then we can start to improve the journey. Uh, we can start to look to reevaluate what we're sending, uh, look to make people more than just customers, getting feedback, surprising and delighting them, but also amplifying um, our reach as well. If you've got any questions, you can reach out to me on on uh, on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on uh, on LinkedIn, but also you can go to our website as well um, to uh, to get more information about what it is that I've been talking about today. But thank you.